unfortunately, we have to turn our attention to some bad news in the end. B-A. By now, you know LeBron James is out indefinitely with a high ankle sprain. Rumor has it's going to be three weeks or four weeks. That has implications on the standings and implications on the Lakers and the trade deadline. But one thing I want to discuss with you is the MVP race. It was Joel Embiid in front. He got hurt. And then it was LeBron in front. He got hurt. What do you think about where the MVP race stands right now as we head into the second half of the season? And going into the season with everybody healthy, KD was going to be my choice. Mm. But that, but that's why this is a marathon, and this is why it's important for the elite players to compete in the regular season. Put some respect on Dame Dollar's name in this conversation, too. Yep. All right? I see Jokic is acknowledged as the favorite, and Harden has been outstanding with the Nets. But this looks like Giannis's trophy to win and everybody else finished second. Mm, explain That's why, That's what Mr. this Rose. is lining up to be. Because the All-Star Game MVP, the back-to-back reigning MVP, his numbers are just as comparable, if not better. He's now getting triple doubles. Drew Holiday is balling when he's out. And I'm like, wait a minute, Giannis has a chance if he can stay healthy the remainder of the year to be the constant choice and actually be a number one seed in the East and be the MVP for the third straight time. I believe only Larry Joe Bird and probably what Bill Russell has done that in the history of this league. I believe Will Chamberlain has as well, but you know, you don't come here for accuracy. We don't do the research here live on the air. But Tommy, I want you to put up that list of candidates again, because when you look at this list of about 10, what is it, eight players, they're all deserving of winning the MVP. And I think what it really is gonna come down to is team performance, because all of these are ha- players are having such great individual seasons that it'll be those players that are on the, the l- teams that lead their conference, like the Bucks, if they can leapfrog the Sixers and the Nets, or the Nets. Like, I think really team performance will dictate who ends up holding the Bill Russell Trophy at the end of the season. And one player not on this list that should be in consideration is Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard is a couple times finals MVP. However, his Clippers played the Hawks and they were down by 22 points last night. What happened? Luke Kennard happened. That man right there <laughs> took over. Why you brought laughing? the Clippers Why all you the laughing? way back. All the way back to get the victory. What do you think about the Clippers' performance and the impact of LeBron James's injury will have on their spot in the standings? I think you need to put some respect on that left-handed number five, Luke Kennard. And I'm disappointed that his jersey ain't hanging up in your studio today. You got the nerve to be laughing at Kawhi showing emotion when his team get down. That means he understood the sense of urgency. And I'm glad that we did the A-plus television production trick on you guys. Great job, Demetrius. We did an MVP conversation, right? And we did what everybody does at the barbershop, what everybody does in the media. You don't mention Kawhi. So, so why no are we not missing Kawhi? So no, why are we not missing Kawhi? So I'll do it. How about they got a chance to still have the best record in the West? How about the fact that he's averaging 25 plus points? He's still a, the premier lockdown defender in the game. Why can't he be involved in these MVP conversations? David, Dowling, Jacoby. If you look at four, five, and six right there, you have three teams that could improve their spot in the standings, and all three of those teams have an MVP candidate on it. And I think whichever team ends up in that one spot or two spot of those three could have the MVP on it. And of course, there are some teams in the East in contention as well. And Jalen, there's someone that we celebrate here for years now. The Butcher! And he got into the league, and then... It's LaMelo, just just run the front end. It hurts my heart, Jalen Rose. It hurts my heart to fix my lips and say into this microphone that LaMelo Ball is expected to miss the rest of the season. What a superstar turn he had, clear path to the rookie of the year, lighting up the league, filling the seats, just setting the world on fire with his playmaking and his scoring and his rebounding. And now we will not see him until next season. Your thoughts about this news, about our guy, LaMelo Ball. We suffered through the year and shed so many tears for our guy who put on the show this year, second amongst rookies in points, 
leads rookies in rebounds, leads rookies in assists, and had the Charlotte Hornets become must-see TV on mm-hmm. League Pass. Mm-hmm. I'm so disappointed that he got injured. You know what? I might cancel League Pass. I might cancel <laughs> no, League not. Pass. No, you're not, because I know you watch every single night all night. <laughs> There's no power out right now, so you can't cancel League Pass. Okay. We want to give here's... our thoughts to LaMelo Ball. But... Wish him a speedy recovery. But I got a warning for the rest of the league. His manager, Jermaine Jackson, my little brother, told me the league better be on notice. Because now that he has a wrist injury, he might just go all Larry Bird and be shooting everything left-handed all summer and getting Mm. in the weight room, getting bigger. So now it's going to be over. He's going to be ambidextrous next year. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.